Joining us now is Iowa Republican Congresswoman Marionette Miller-Meeks, who has voted for McCarthy all 11 times. Congresswoman, appreciate you joining us. Thanks for sticking around. Are you happy with this adjournment? Do you, do you think progress can be made overnight into tomorrow? I think the fact that we got 219 votes to adjourn, I know that seems like a, you know, a farcical thing, but that's a small victory. Uh, and yes, I think that uh, we're going to continue this process. Uh, but people are seeing the process that typically occurs behind closed doors uh, and what people used to laughingly refer to and derisively refer to as smoke-filled back rooms. This is happening out uh, transparently in the public's eye and they're seeing what goes on. This is part of that process. It's part of the process of the House uh, and they're seeing it happen in, in live uh, now and we're going to continue to work through this process until we have a speaker. And yet there are deals being made with members uh, with holdouts, do, are you, do you feel like you know all the deals that are being made, what has been given away, and are you concerned about what more may need to be given away by Speaker Mc, by uh, So uh, Mr. certainly McCarthy. each and each and every time that there has been agreed upon, so things that, uh, you know, one party uh, wants, uh, that this faction uh, of individuals want, uh, those have been conveyed to the rest of the House members, and we've discussed those. As you know, we had uh, uh, two very long conferences uh, back in November. Uh, then we've also had conference uh, by phone, and so this has been relayed to us, this give and take. I, I think what most of us would prefer was that all of this had, had been done in writing and presented, so we could have discussed it all debated it all and then gone through that orderly process that we did during uh, the two conferences that we had at which time we discussed numerous amendments went through each and every one of them uh, every member uh, had a chance to get up and speak to debate them to uh, to uh, relay their concerns relay what uh, constitutionally had been done before in the past and whether something was in alignment with the Constitution so that deliberative process is taking place it is ongoing and members are being informed on what's transpiring uh, through that. So it has been a transparent process as we go forward. Are you concerned at all about what has been negotiated thus far? I, even as somebody who supports uh, Kevin McCarthy to become speaker, are you worried about the, the power of others to, to challenge him down the road? I'm not concerned about the power to challenge others. I mean, we did take a vote on that uh, in the entire uh, conference uh, membership uh, that we thought that the motion to vacate should not be at one. It should be at a larger number. And actually that, you know, we should have consistency across because you have different rules that it's so many uh, members for, for a certain type of rule or to, uh, to do a certain type of motion. Um, and so that there should be consistency among the rules in how many members it takes uh, uh, to uh, change something. Uh, however, uh, Kevin McCarthy met with members. Uh, the number was dropped to five. Uh, we were, that was conveyed to us. We, uh, you know, as members agreed that uh, that would be okay. Uh, we don't see that it weakens the speakership or uh, Kevin McCarthy. And then the number was, uh, as you know, uh, last evening was dropped to one. That was also conveyed to us. Uh, so we're all parts of different caucuses that have met with the, with the leader, uh, either the leadership of our caucus or members of the caucus itself, uh, that have met with, um, you know, uh, Leader McCarthy uh, uh, and have discussed this. And to this point, I mean, there are budgetary things that have been put in place or will be put in place into the House conference rules that the majority of us uh, agree with, and we are not concerned with those. I think most importantly is to remember that Kevin McCarthy has uh, considered the threats to our nation to be the debt, the border, China, and our educational system. Every single person in our conference agrees with that, even the people who are not supporting Kevin McCarthy. And most importantly, we were elected because the country felt that we were on the wrong track. We feel we're on the wrong track. Those who are not voting for Kevin McCarthy feel the country is on the wrong track. We're put in place to put the country on the right, right track. So we need to address the border. We need to address the untold numbers of fentanyl coming across the border. I'm, I'm a physician, a former director of public health. As you know, last year the CDC said there was 107,000 drug overdoses that led to the death of young people, 18 to 45. Those young people weren't killed by COVID. They were killed by drug overdoses. So we know we need to address the border. Right. We know we need but, but to address that, the education But excuse system. me for interrupting, but none of that will get done until there is a, a speaker and th there is no end in sight at this point. What gives you confidence that at least five or possibly more hard no votes uh, can be moved so that the math goes in favor of Mr. McCarthy? 
Well, certainly the numbers of no's for McCarthy haven't increased. If you'll notice, the trend line has stayed the same. We have all stayed uh, very stalwart in our positions, both for McCarthy and those not. But then this evening, last evening, we had uh, a challenge in getting to uh, the numbers uh, to uh, adjourn. Tonight, we got to 219 to adjourn. We know that there's uh, progress being made. So I think what's most important is that we're patient. You know, no good thing comes without failure. I can tell you in my life, being the fourth of eight kids, no one in my family ever having gone to college, if I would have given up at the first no, I would never have become a doctor. First one in my family to go to college, first one to get a degree, first one to go to medical school, the only doctor in my family. I'm a member of Congress, one of 11,000 people in our history. So we know throughout our history, we've had challenges, we've had obstacles, we rise to that occasion. We will get through this, we will use patience, uh, we'll have understanding, and we'll try to meet the needs of all of those in the Republican conference so that we can get to the job of helping the Americans with inflation, helping them yeah. with the border, helping with the opioid crisis. You've also had an incredible career in the U.S. military, uh, and I thank you for thank your you. service, and I appreciate you uh, continuing that service. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you.